What is up, people? Confound it here, and I am bringing to you the long-awaited conclusion to the making intro with ArcSoft and Showbiz tutorial that I started a while back before I got sick, and uh, I do believe I'm over it now. You know, it's um, I'm still a little congested and everything else, but whatever. Let's get to this and get it done. All right, I hate to do it to you, but we're going to have to do a little bit of math. Don't worry. Don't worry. You do not need calculators. All right, so in order to understand what we're going to be doing, I need to explain exactly how a movie works. So think about every frame, and ArcSoft uses 24 frames per second. Think about every frame as a picture. Here, see my mouse? Watch this. See how every one of those when you uh, break it out into frames is a different picture. Now it'll get a little bit more complicated but I'm not going to go into that until we get into other forms of software. So I'm just going to say the ArcSoft goes in 24 frames per second. So between one second and here is 24 pictures. Alright so we've got that. Now let's go ahead and get these storm clouds out of here because there's nothing but bright days ahead I tell you what. All right, now that that's gone, I'm going to switch over here to how do I make an intro. And before I show you um, how I did what I did, I'm just going to give you a quick walk through here. If you look through, I have three um, images here. And if you take three of those images and you use each one, there's not 24 of them. But if I, there were 24, it would be a much smoother transition. But seriously, that would take five or six hours you know to get everything all lined up correctly and everything else so I'm just going to go with three for now if you want to go through and do 24 of them feel free to do it it's it's your world I'm just visiting so I've got the three frames that we're going to use or the three pictures or images that we're going to use and I've got a couple of uh you know just a couple of other assets in there that we're going to use so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to drag over Pixlr and uh, hey look at that and I really do mean it thanks seriously thank you all for watching comments commenting and subscribing I've gotten a few um, you know even private messages I've made a couple of phone calls trying to help people out you know thank you seriously anyway um, I'm gonna walk through how I created those and what I did here was we have the regular background that's um, carrying on from part one that I showed y'all how to make and uh you know, I wasn't really happy with it. It was a little, a little too blue, a little too bright. So I tossed this. Uh, it's just a layer of black over it, and I set the mode of it to overlay. And I did that by clicking right here, and then just, uh, you know, going through here and finding overlay and putting it on there. Normally, it would look like this, but when you add overlay, since it's black, it makes the darker areas darker, and that's that. Now, here comes the semi-tricky part. I'm just going to go ahead and turn all of these on. Look at that jumbled up mess. But what I did was I started with my first line of text, which would be the first image. And from there, I duplicated it by dragging it down here to the new layer icon. And then from there, I took my text tool right here, just clicked on it, and I changed the text. And if you'll notice here in the text, let me get that off of there, actually. If you notice here in the text, I had to center it manually with the space bar. So uh, that's something you're going to need to be aware of. But by duplicating and then by doing it this way, I was able to... I was able to line the um, text for the second image, which is right here, easier, which will make for a much more subtle transition when we bring everything into ArcSoft. And all I did here was, uh, you know, for the first one I went there, file, save, made sure the quality was 100, JP JPEG is good for what we're doing. I'll go into the different file formats when we get later on down the road in the series then okay 
and you can see right here I just labeled it intro S1 step 1 step 2 step 3 for all three of them I'm not gonna save out all of them trying to save a little bit of time and keep it under 15 minutes so I did that and now what we'll do is drag them down to our timeline Now that we've got those, go over here to the transitions. And I always like to start with a fade in and a fade out. I call it walking on and walking off, but uh, you can call it whatever you want to. And then we'll put a transition between the two cuts. And that was a cross. And then we'll use a zoom in and out. Shorten these down a little bit. I have no idea why it overwrote those like that, but it is what it is. And now we'll preview. Got the fade in, transition out. Okay, right there. Now you see the this cross here. That showed us a little bit of a because it wasn't. The, the black video behind was shown because it pulled the whole frame out but if you look back here it looks you know it, it you jump to what I call an optical conclusion that the words are in motion because the background is relatively staying the same but here the background changes so I mean that might be something you want to do but if you want it to uh, give the appearance of just new words and everything else is um staying the same use a different transition we tried the zoom in and out spinning cubes would be another one this one might look good cover all right fades in yep that one worked well all right now Let's go with a little bit of music. That's way long. How long is that? That's two minutes. That's that's way too long for an intro. I can you can cut it down, but then you have to worry about breakpoints in the music and you have to add a keyframe for it to fade out. Let's give this a listen. See how it just ended abruptly there? So take this out to 12 seconds I want it to end at 12 then we'll take this back out so it meets there all right now we'll back up a little bit And what I'm doing is I'm listening for the beats just to try and line everything else up with it. Because I, remember I said earlier, you want your action on the beat. Alright, I want to put a keyframe there. And a keyframe back here at the end because I'm going to start to fade that out. Let me get my playhead back here. Play. All right. And I'm going to bring this back here to line up with the fade out. All right. It's a little bit quick for my liking, but you know. Now we can fool with these. And I'm looking right here, I could see a little bit of action right there where the tempo hits. Or not the tempo, but the. It's probably bass.
the square of this program can be a little bit fickle sometimes. Kind of counterintuitive. But you know, it's what we got. There we are. Alright, now we're going to click on the entire timeline and we'll give it a playthrough. Timing was a little bit off right there. Okay, I just want to... Right about here. I just want to bring in another little effect because I'm crazy like that. That's why they call me confound it. You're not recording me, are you? Alright, now I'm going to put a keyframe on here so I can make that a little bit louder. Just gonna go back to the entire timeline and we'll just play back this one little part here. You're not recording me, are you? I like to have fun with it a little bit, and you know, him saying you're not recording me was a little bit fun. So, I'm gonna save the project. And I am going to show you another way to make an intro which won't hurt my feelings at all if you do go this route. I did it myself and um, just to test it out before I recommended it. And if you go to here, it's flixpress.com. They actually let you make these um, pretty uh, kick-ass templates for free. And when you bring them into ArcSoft, they scale up. Um, I'm using this one as an outro. An outro. You know, you can go in there and I'm already logged into my account. You do have to log in. You go in there and, you know, pick your audio for it. And that's that. Come in, enter your top line. Make sure your spelling's correct. Y'all don't need to watch me uh, customize that. But anyway, um, you know, I didn't add the 720p or the one month hosting extension. Couldn't even figure out what that was. But anyway, uh, I was fine with this. And, you know, that was that. And they have a pretty good little selection in here. If you want to um, get one of the paid ones, I mean, look through here. Five bucks. It'd probably be an additional you know two dollars or whatever else to get it in HD but I don't know it seems like it's worth it and then that way you can make yourself um you know a constant intro and a constant outro for right now until you can uh, get better software so you can really make what you're envisioning but um yeah you know that's about it so you know that's going to wrap up the part two and that's going to end us on the how to make an intro with showbiz and pixlr so uh y'all remember to comment like subscribe and you know check me out on facebook and twitter and if you have any friends that need help with uh, their montage making or videos and anything else be sure and share my channel with them thanks for stopping by y'all come back now yeah huh